Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Well, I found the priests and priestesses, uh, but they're not of the specific gods, so we're at an orphanage right now in the home instance since there's no reason for us to ever see this in any other time, so I thought, hey, let's start the video in a cool place. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, there's loads of priestesses, right? Sort of, they, but they don't have any dialogue for us whatsoever, and you can see some more down here. There's a priest here. Let's play a game! They've all got pretty cool masks. I think this actually looks a lot like, on my Asura, on my main account, I, I've been playing with Acolyte armor. It actually looks a lot like that, maybe, at least the masks do. But none of these guys say anything to us. And in fact... Oh no, he didn't. I, th I thought I act interacted with this person and then they replied with like a default child and um, like voice. But yeah, so they're kind of here, but there's nothing that hints that these are priests or priestesses of Melandru, as we said in our personal story. So it could be that that option we chose at the start really doesn't have any significance right now. And there's a cool little puppet show here with two, chi three children. How many kids are there there? All just like stood in amongst one another, which is great. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd start here. I was just looking around the personal in in instance to see if there was anything any good at all <laughs> for us to see. Uh, there's, there's not really. There's a couple of bits of dialogue. There's some guys that are like, oh, business is booming. Like this guy here says, ah, there is. Actually, I think he might have something to do. I recognize his name. He might have something to do with a different story. Uh, but he says uh, that we're making the Saraf look bad. And we're like, no, you're the real heroes. And this person here says that business is booming if he need? mentions our name. Um, we ask where our cut is, but apparently he won't sell us anything anyway. Um, so, yeah, really, that's it. Uh, this person seems to sell some stuff, but I think you can get this elsewhere in the game anyway. So, Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's really just a little bit of a look at the personal instance, I guess, because as far as I'm aware, we don't really have to come back here now. Um, so enjoy. I'm, I'm sure there might be something at the hospital as well, but um, really we're not missing out on much. But yeah, I just want to show you guys that. I shouldn't have exited to Deventi's Reach like this because now we're going to have a double loading screen. Yay. So uh, we'll do a quick recap on the plot actually before we move forward and also another day I figured it would be a good time to show you guys another bit of the interface just so we can get it all under our belt so that we've established everything first of all though um, what's going on with the personal story well last time we did two quests I believe um, we've already read this one the informant we did uh, Sin first Rai was hard to deal with but he finally admitted who bought the unusual stationery Minister Julius Zamon I reported it to Captain Thackeray, and he's eager to find hard evidence to convict Minister Zamon of treason. Logan has asked me to assist the investigation. I have to decide between searching Zayman's home or questioning people who know him. We don't have time to do both, and we decided to question people who know him. A uh, society function. I found enough people to testify against Zamon. Because have you noticed, even Sin, if you remember, when I was watching that back and editing that, even Sin first, or I was like, yeah, I'll stay in Divinity's Reach in case we need to call you in for like some kind of court hearing or something. So all these people have been like, yeah, we'll testify. Even Farron said he'd testify if he had to. Um, I found enough people to testify, uh, testify against this bastard and make it stick. Lord Farron spotted Minister Zamon engaging from a bandit-controlled forest and Guardsman Reth mentioned that the Ministry Guard was often ordered away from areas where bandit raids were about to take place. And Farron told us something too, didn't he? But I can't remember. Oh no, yeah, that's what he said. Wait, hold on. Oh yeah, Lord Farron. Sorry, for some reason I read that as Thackeray. So uh, now we've got our next thing um, to attend Minister Zamon's treason trial. It's funny that the recap doesn't actually mention that um, we apprehended him, but yeah, so that happened. That's what we're doing now. Um, we are now magically level 10, we, so this does mean we have our next utility slot. Our next one won't be for a while until we're level 20, um, but we do get another choice. Again, I have no idea what I'm going for. A lot of you guys have been saying that Beastmaster spec is like really damn good, so I'm thinking of going with that. And I saw like a link on Reddit the other day of this guy who had just like loads of pets and I found out you can buy a consumable item in some of the char areas that gives you like human ranger pets when you activate it, which just sounds awesome. So I think we'll go kind of beast mastery, which is going to matter more when we get to traits, which as you can see here, unlock at level 11, if you're not aware of what those are. Uh, they'll refine our builds a little bit more, but for now, we just get to choose some other stuff. We've got six skill points. Um, I want to get Troll Unguent because A, this was it's a really cool skill now. from Guild Wars 1. And B, apparently it's like ridiculously overpowered. Even P Rangers that are using it think that it's pretty overpowered. So uh, this is going to regenerate our health for 10 seconds. Oh, and wow, and we get 100 health each time. So this is going to heal us for 1,000 health and we don't even have that much max health. <laughs> okay, I can see that's pretty good. Uh, and then we get to feel... I've been using Sikkim a bit off screen. I don't know whether it's that good. Uh, I'll keep it though. We, we may as well keep it for a little while. But we also have a choice of some other skills here. Uh, prayer to Kormir. Meh. 
Survival, we evade back with a crack of lightning, dealing damage and gaining vigor. Summon a sun spirit. Apparently these guys have been nerfed a bit. Mm, so thanks to everyone who told me that. So we won't use any of these spirits for now. Uh, not that it really matters. I have the same view, by the way, for Guild Wars 2 as I do for Guild Wars 1. That for general PvE, you don't have to be totally optimal, honestly, now. It's not designed to be like that. So don't worry too much. Let's go with Sharpening Quite Stone. Useful. That just seems reasonably helpful. Uh, bleeding is a condition that stacks in intensity rather than duration. So if we do have something like this, we're going to put lots of stacks of bleeding on people and then get more damage out. So it's not actually redundant to hit the same guy with lots of splashes of bleeding. So yeah, there we go. We got that. This should be fun. Also, uh, so I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the achievements. These are, um, sorry, a little bit of the UI. These are achievements. Uh, so achievements are one of those things you can do in the game. Uh, it's very much designed that they're not something you do once you've finished all the other stuff in the game, but they just kind of keep unlocking as you play through. So every day you have different achievements you can go for. And if you complete all of these in a day, you get like a chest with a bunch of experience and stuff in it, which is cool. Uh, you also have a long, more long-term version of that monthly achievements, which are pretty nice. I was always under the impression that these would change every day, like it would be different objectives each day, and monthly it would change too, which I think would have really done a lot for people with replayability of the game and done a lot to stop people saying oh I don't know what I'm doing in Guild Wars 2 but they didn't do that in the end it's just it's always the same every month and every day so I'd like to see that change or some daily system go in like Nicholas the Traveller was every week in Guild Wars 1 and so forth but in any case you got that and then you have like lifetime achievements and there's loads of different categories so there's Slayer um, and these are the things that you can kill and once you've killed like a thousand of them you max out the achievement uh, you get loads of different ones to do with the story of the game and depending on your choices that you make um, and completing hearts and quests and stuff so here you can see we've already unlocked one emergency response hero. Oh no, sorry, we've a, a, a local hero, that's the one, so we're on tier 2 of this. So when you max them out, you get to max them out again and again. There's loads for PvP, loads for crafting and all that kind of stuff, which we'll get into eventually. Exploring, as you can see here, um, and then there's loads that basically just cost loads of money uh, here in fashion, loads for different types of weapons and stuff like that. So um, by unlocking these, you get achievement points, and these points are displayed next to your name in like guild lists, if you choose to have them there, and friend lists and stuff. So basically, it's your way of getting EP in Guild Wars 2. Um, and uh, on my main account I've accrued a, uh, I've actually started to slip behind a bit now I was doing really well in those first early days um, I think I was one of the first few people to get to a thousand I mean there was definitely loads of people that go before me but you know I was up there in the, in the top band but now I don't even think I've got 2,000 at this point and I just noticed loads of people getting more because if you just log in every day for example and do the daily and the monthly you just get tons and tons and tons so in any case uh, there's that let's just continue with our story shall we um, uh, where are we going are we going there are we I love how much is around this garden. See, this is cool. I, I'm a little bit worried, though, because we're probably going to find in a minute that when we do, like, this first story arc, we'll get into the next, and it'll be like, okay, now go all the way over here, and we're just going to be miles away because we've had so many that have been stuck here. But that might be quite cool. It'll be a, a nice way to explore and just push out into the world without having to stop and, like, grind or whatever in certain areas. Though there is a lot to be said for stopping and smelling the roses, so... Also, um, one other thing before we get started here, um, we're in 720p today, that's not going to stay the same. It, it's really annoying actually, I got a new graphics card, and I always had a problem with my TV in that if I, because I, I, I use a television that's that supposedly is supposed to run at 1080p or whatever, but it doesn't really and blah blah blah. I've been using that as my monitor for a very long time and on my old uh, on my old graphics card on low drivers it would work perfectly at 1080p but whenever I updated the drivers it wouldn't and now I've got a new graphics card and those older drivers just simply aren't available for it. So um, it looks horrible if I go up to any kind of quality at all. Like I can't even read text on the screen. So I've dropped it to 720p and tomorrow I guess I'm just going to have to go get a proper monitor so we'll see what happens there. But yeah, so sorry about that guys, but um, yeah. yeah. That's the way it's going. So anyway, right, Zayman, let's uh, let's bring this guy in. Let's see what's going on here. Observer, greetings. greetings. Hello. hello, 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 one and all. There's a scroll here. Uh, I never really mentioned one thing about this place. Actually, I did mention the the planets and that the devs came up here and stuff, didn't I? Um, there's a few like instances around here, like you can go into the Queen's Palace and stuff, and like the Seraph headquarters was one of them. We'll get to those all eventually. In the main world, you can come up here and sit, really, like listen to loads of humans talking about politics and stuff, which is pretty cool, which maybe we'll do at some point. Uh, but yes, yeah, so right now, in the personal story, we've got a bunch of familiar faces here, Please apparently. Speak to the oh, and a cutscene. I haven't had this much fun since I discovered the agriculture minister was stealing truffles. I remember that blustery old fool. He swore that his pet pig had dug them up by accident. The tricky part was telling him from his pig. Oh, snap. Now then, my young friend. 
Are you ready to present the case? I've got to stop old snapping. I've gone over everything a dozen times. Unless something goes horribly wrong, we'll get our man. And at this rate, Queen Jenna's guaranteed to notice you. If nothing else, I'll make sure your name reaches her ears. Minister Codicus is waiting. Signal him when you're ready. Good luck. And may Lyssa bless you with unparalleled eloquence. I mentioned... Oh, we've got more people talking over there. Sure you will, Logan. I mentioned last episode that I didn't really like how quickly they just brought Anise into the picture, they should which pass is fine. A law that says anyone who falsely accuses a minister goes to the gallows. That way, no matter what, there'd be a hanging. So you see what I mean? These guys just look evil now, and they kind of just twist that and they make them look evil. But yeah, I mentioned that about um, Anise before. Um, but one thing I do think this game does really well is it talks a lot about the Queen, a hell of a lot of the Queen, before you ever, like, you don't even really consider, oh god, will I ever meet this person? Um, and they really do build her up before she comes into the picture, which uh, which I quite like, as I say. That's, that was done pretty good. Please speak to the scribe. Sure. Uh, have you guys got anything mean to say? The other two guards did. I'll do my best. Ooh, ooh, you do have something to say. Just between you and me, I hope they lock him in the deepest, coldest dungeon and lose the key. Ooh, okay, why do you say that? My sister lost her job because Zayman sent thieves to the noble house she was guarding. She and her family lost their home. Her youngest child was ill and died within a fortnight. Oh, wow. You don't get this much. That's good. Okay, wow, okay. That's, that's very depressing. That's awful. Send your sister to my home. My house manager may have work for her. Do you mean it? She'll be so relieved. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Wait, what? See, so if I go back now, is there going to be a character there? I, I seem to remember vaguely from ages ago, like the betas. Do you actually have a home in the personal instance? Because I remember someone was saying that, like, like I, I vaguely remember a video. Someone went up there and they saw, like, all these trophies and stuff. Or the idea was trophies would end up being there. But I haven't, I, I, I've got to admit, I haven't had an amazing look around the human personal instance. But I haven't seen anything like that. So was this originally here, there to have this person appear in our home? I, I want to go back and check that. I'll probably check that off screen and we'll start the next video. Um, if with it, if it's happened. That's cool. Seeing that was so inconspicuous as well, because like, six watch over. I mean, damn, you could easily just miss out on that. That's a whole character that's like joined your party or whatever, but you would totally miss it. All right, so what else have we got? We got the ministry guard up there or the judicial scribe. Uh, I think the idea is we can go and speak to everyone and kind of get our head straight with what exactly is going on. We got Nabel. Hello. What are you doing, Melissa? I didn't know you were interested in judicial matters. Thackeray had me identify Queen Selma's stolen chalice this morning. I'm curious about its relevance in this trial. Again, I think that might be another personal story step, possibly. Queen Salma, if you've noticed, our home is the Salma district. Salma was the first queen of Kryta after the royal line was essentially broken. Her father fled the throne and led, led, like abandoned the entire kingdom. And for a while, a different group of people were in charge of Kryta. This is Guild Wars 1 stuff, which will become relevant later in our personal story. Um, but Salma was the woman that retook the throne. And indeed, you helped retake the throne and got to know in Guild Wars 1. So she's quite prominent in Crichton culture later on um, and obviously this this item what was it you called it a chalice I believe it was a chalice um, it doesn't say brilliant okay well <laughs> whatever one of her items there uh, apparently uh, someone so I th again I think know. that might be another personal story thing hey Farron how's it I'm going rich, you know um, don't you worry one bit when it's my turn to testify I'll make your case for you it's going to be monumental all right okay you feeling ready uh, I'm more than ready Zayman sent one of his sock puppets to try to bribe me away I don't think he realizes just how rich I actually am the nerve you turned him away uh, of course the big stinking puppet tried to intimidate me but I demonstrated my dexterity with the blade and he went running back to Papa ladies will do anything for a hero if you know what I mean um, sure, whatever you say, Farron. Uh, wow, maybe he is actually quite rich. It depends how much money he was offered. Uh, and then Marius Caron here. I'm not sure about hey, uh, this. if you get a conviction today, does that mean I get my chalice back? The Seraph's evidence room is no place for my family's most treasured heirloom. That's up to the court, my lord, by expect so. So this is one story. If that is a part of it, is that is one thing I would be particularly interested in, seeing all, all of the different character stories for that race, like in parallel, so you do get the full picture. But it's, it's just not practical. It's, it's really not. All right, so what else have we got? We've got some nice concept art there in the background, can you see? Um, and no, that isn't... Wait, is that Logan and Kate and stuff? No, it's not. Okay, so there's some weird characters here that I don't actually know who they are. Accusing a minister of treason? It's preposterous. I would have thought the entire Zayman family would be here. His mother is bedridden, though I did see Lady Madeline. Ooh, really? 
But we hear so much about this bedridden mother, but seriously, yeah. Yeah, these characters are weird. It kind of reminds me of before the game came out, like, there was concept art for all of the classes, uh, and they kind of painted a picture of, like, another Destiny's Edge, and one of the devs once joked on the forums that, like, ooh, this could be another group of, of Burning Adventures. And that, that actually quite excited me, like, another group like Destiny's Edge, but maybe, like, a bad one or something, but never ended up in the game. Andrew, not, right? not to say they ever had any plans for that. It was just a joke, but still. Uh, hey, Reth, how's it going? I hope you can pull this off. Talking to you or it already cost me my job. If Zayman goes free, it'll cost me a lot more. Just tell the truth and Zayman won't be able to do any more damage. Hmm, sure. Uh, Nicholas Winters. Okay, sure. Hey, Benjamin. My time is uh, are you feeling confident? I bet it's exciting, the idea of ruining a minister's career. I believe in removing rotten fruit before the tree becomes sick. I love that analogy. Uh, when you put it like that, I suppose so. What makes you so sure Zayman's guilty? I've seen the evidence. I believe when all this comes out, the ministry will be grateful for our help. I don't doubt it. I prefer you think my own home will be safer for your efforts. The one, the, this is what I think the problem with this whole thing is, right? There's a lot about catching this guy, but there's not so much about the bad stuff he did, like... We saw bandits attacked and we know what he's done, but I don't know, I feel like there should have been more... I don't feel like super personally impacted by it, because yeah, Farron got kidnapped, but we also got, got him back within like, like the next five minutes. I don't know. No. Uh, Lady Madeline, hey, how's it going? Um, you feeling good? Uh, I'm sorry, I've nothing left to say to you. You're out to spoil my family's good name. Oh, come on! Your brother's already done that, I'm merely calling him to task for it. Jesus, yeah, come on, lady. Give me a break. There's always time to talk. Hulk, citizen. Oh! Ministers only beyond this point. <laughs> I was about to say, I wonder if we can go up there. That would be really cool. And as I pushed left to go up, he knocked me away. Oh, come on. Hulk, citizen. Ministers only beyond this point. What if I was playing like a thief? Could I infiltrate his arrow up there? I bet I could, you know. Unless, I don't know. Hmm, that's weird. Okay. Uh, so I guess we can't be on the jury. Shame. Uh, what else is over here? May the six watch over you. Yeah, sure. Uh, we got another we guard. We the best we can. Halt, citizen. Ministers only beyond this point. See, I thought she'd say that. That's another weird thing. It's like, if you're gonna voice a male and a female version of it, why make it... Why? Why do it exactly the same? Change it slightly. You're gonna have to pay a voice actor to do two different versions of the lines anyway. Just change the dialogue ever so slightly. How hard is it to do that? Because you have to record it twice. Just change it slightly so it seems more natural. But no, they're both saying the exact same thing. Ah, uh, little things, man. Little things. People talk about the little details. Those are the little details. Uh, Sin first right here. Hello, stranger. Uh, I wish you'd never dragged me into this dreadful affair. I have a business to run. Just tell you the truth and it'll be over. I never really liked you. You're a bit of a dick. Uh, we got the big Norn here. You the must unlovable. visit more often. You must visit more often, sure. Um, Zamon himself. You'll regret uh, you're a fool, you know. You'll never convict me. Oh, wait, he's more nasally and high pitch, isn't he? As I'm innocent as a babe in arms. The evidence says uh, otherwise. Let's see who the court believes. Hmm. Uh, and we're about to see that the Crichton court system is a bit shit as well, by the way. Uh, Countess Anise, you look calm, but I, can but I can tell that you're worried. Don't be. You've done all the necessary preparation, and the facts are on our side. This case is ours to win. Uh, thanks for the vote of confidence, Countess. Now I just have to win it. Uh, and Thackeray himself, uh, proving Zayman's guilt won't be easy, but I have every confidence in you. Now get out there and convict that maggot. Thanks, Captain. I will, sure. Okay. Hello. I've alone. spoken to everyone. Yes, how may I help you? Um, I've got a couple of questions first. Uh, what's expected of me during the trial? Uh, it's your job as prosecutor to present enough evidence to prove the defendant's guilt beyond a shadow of a doubt. You should also behave with respect toward the court's time, authority and wisdom. Okay, uh, what will happen if Zayman is convicted? The head justice of the Judiciary Council determines the means and timing of punishment. In today's case, Legate Minister Cordicus will be presiding. Sure, okay, never heard of that person, but fine. Uh, what will happen if Zayman is acquitted? Minister Zayman goes free, of course, and the evidence presented today can never be used to harm him again. Also, those making the false accusation will be charged with slander. Brilliant, so slander. Okay, so straight away you can kind of see it's a bit off, like there's a lot put in place to stop people persecuting other people. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but still, uh, I'm ready to present my case against Zamon and start the trial. Okay, only 20 minutes in before we do anything. <laughs> Hear ye, the trial of Minister Julius Zayman is hereby called to order. Legate Minister Codicus presiding. Who stands for the prosecution? I do. Your Honor, we have evidence proving Minister Zayman conspired against the citizens of Divinity's Reach. He abused his authority to commit thievery, murder, and treason. We will present incriminating documents and sworn testimony from respected members of the community. 
including the accused's own sister. The prosecution seems to have prepared quite a compelling case. Minister Zeman, can you refute these dire accusations? Refute? Why bother? My Lord Codicus, in accordance with the most ancient tenets of Crichton Law, I invoke my right to trial by combat. <gasps> this court accepts your invocation. By law and custom, you may choose a second to fight with you in the circle. Thank you, Legate Minister. I choose my retainer, Idle the Unlovable, as my second. The prosecution must also nominate a principal and a second, or forfeit the case. I will be the principal, Legate Minister. I'd like to request a short recess to select my second. Granted. When the prosecution is ready to continue, this court will reconvene and the trial by combat will begin. See, I, I am a bit of a nerd because I would have rather. Can't really jump around saying, "Pick me, pick me," but I can certainly think it. I sure you can, Logan. I I think I would have rather seen like a long, drawn-out court, like a proper case, come out here. Uh, but no, they just throw all of that straight out the window. All the evidence we did, everything, just uh, whatever. I'm gonna fight. So basically, it's whoever's strongest is is um innocent basically is the way this is working uh so yeah we've got uh logan here very convincing argument here he could jump around saying pick me but he can think it right now you might get a little bit put off because everyone's got a star you might think oh do i press f at the person with the star and is that going to mean that i've suddenly picked them no you do get a chance to speak to everyone you make your choice by speaking to the scribe so don't worry too much uh so logan first of all oh wait oh yeah logan uh, i'm ready to go if you need me there's nothing i'd like better than to personally dish out some of the punishment zayman deserves I'd love to have you beside me, Captain, but I need more time to decide, sure. Uh, Countess Anise, uh, trial by combat? Who'd have thought it? I'm surprised Zayman even knows it's an option. There hasn't been one in over 50 years, or at least that's what I've been told. Why wouldn't you have been told? You're like the information gatherer. You're like head of Shining Blade. You should know this stuff. Uh, then we ought to make this as memorable as possible. Interested? Uh, you're thinking of choosing me? Delicious! It would certainly... <laughs> delicious, really. It would certainly be... It reminds me of Reginald D. Hunter when he says that's his second name. It would certainly catch Zayman and his attack dog off guard. By all means, yes. Um, sure, excellent. I'll know you when... Uh, I'll let you know when I've made my final choice. Uh, we got Farron we can pick I'm as well. Sure Ready this. for action, old friend? And let me add that I'm truly flattered you're even considering me as your second. Let me add him. I'm the top of my game. Glad to know you're willing and able. Let me know. I'll let you know. Um, who else have we got? Oh, funnily enough, we've got Reth as well. Uh, which is kind of the option out of the blue, if you ask me. If you need backup, I'm your man. I'd rough up a crooked noble and general principal, but with Zayman, it's personal. He seriously needs a beating. So, we get this choice. I like the little choices like this that don't pretend to be something super important. And I think that the game would have been really good if... Yeah, ArenaNet set themselves a quota for the amount of choices that players were supposed to get as they went through the game. I think they would have done a lot better off if they made the choices, choices like this, that have a very short term impact rather than trying to make everything some long branch that happened constantly that they can ever really do justice to. Uh, these are the kind of things that I really enjoy. Um, and who do we go for? So we've got Farron who, for most characters, most of the personal stories, you end up with some kind of friend that's close to you uh, that tapers off very quickly in the personal story and you don't see much of later. So we can enjoy the company of our friend for as little time as we possibly can. I mean, we rescued him and we fought with him in the bandits, but we haven't really done much with him since then. And we probably won't do much with him after this either. So there's that. Uh, we've got Captain Logan Thackeray, who is one of the most important characters in the game and we're going to spend plenty of time with. So do we say, right, let's just dedicate everything to him, go with the game's strengths or, or what? Do we go with Anise, who's probably the most cool character I because she's like the leader of the Shining Blade. Come on. Uh, so she's pretty cool. So we could go with her or Reth. I think I'm going to go with Reth. Just because he's a ministry guard that's fighting with us. We won't see him much past this anyway. And it's nice that this at least shows, you know, the ministry guard aren't just all complete bastards so let's do that let's let's go with ref let's go with ref and i, I forgot that to speak to her uh, hi, um have i decided yeah sure all right although farron is funny now let's go with ref come on stick to my guns right <laughs> don't let me down now we're ready to begin legate minister i have chosen my second an interesting choice for the record, let it be known that this duo will continue until both members of one side surrender or are defeated. If Lord Zaman proves victorious, he is innocent. The case is thrown out and these charges against him may not be brought again. If you win, 
then Zaman is found guilty of this crime. I understand. When you're in position, the trial by combat shall proceed. Good luck to you all. May justice prevail. The other way I guess you could make this decision is depending on your character's class or how you're playing at the moment and then pick someone who you think is going to have complementary abilities. Um, I suppose there's another way you could do it. So yeah, cheering and shouting. Oh my god, and he's already started. Okay, sure. Right, so I'm under the impression this is going to be quite a long fight. I think you should kill the unlovable first because I think Zayman has some way of raising people up and stuff. So uh, that's an interesting way to do things. This guy isn't too dangerous. Uh, I can talk about my skills a little bit. Uh, it's been really interesting playing with the, the bow now that all the bow abilities unlocked. Um, they, they certainly feel far more unique than a lot of the abilities I've seen on other classes so far. Just because they have different effects. So like this one here, point blank shot. This is a returning Guild Wars 1 skill but with a very different effect from Guild Wars 1. Um, and this basically means the closer you are to someone, you activate it and it pushes them away. But if you're further away from them, it doesn't push them so far away. And then, oh and another thing by the way is I think my heal skill is supposed to work on both me and my pet. So I need to remember doing that. Um, so that's quite interesting straight away. That's just... A cool way to look at things. Skill 3 puts 10 stacks of vulnerability on people, which is the most vulnerability I've seen on any one skill in the game, which is great. Uh, vulnerability, that means I'm doing 10% more damage to people, so that's really fun. Also, a, a, a skill name that's returning from Guild Wars 1 too, Hunter's Shot. Um, pretty cool. And uh, then, of course, we've got skill 5 here as well, Barrage. This is an ability you see a lot of players using, um, and I always kind of thought of it as just like this bit of a kind of a crappy looking thing that just like peppers people and just doesn't really do that much damage. The truth is though, it feels quite powerful when you're using it yourself. I mean, it cripples people, that's the main functionality of it, I'd say, and uh, kind of a, a low amount of AoE damage. Um, but still, it's pretty nice, so that's pretty cool. I guess we've got a bit of synergy here with Sharpening Stone and then uh, Rapid Fire, because we can put all of the bleed on people. This guy, as you can see, is an Elementalist, laying down big ring AoEs. If you don't stand in them, you should be alright. Uh, this thing's got a ridiculously short cooldown as well, Triangulum, which is very nice. I keep running into his Stun Ring, which really I shouldn't be doing, but yeah. So that's an interesting way of doing it. Yeah, just really cool, the longbow. Uh, the other thing that I've done as well... Um, oh, also, yeah, long range shot. It does more damage the further away I stand, so bear that in mind too. Uh, the other thing also is we've got our axes here again, so if we run up close and use the axe, you get the four stacks of bleeding. But also, I've equipped a dagger on the offhand here, if you remember. Um, and using this one moves us around a bit, and it poisons people, so that's more dots. So if we do that, that's quite a lot of like damage over time we're putting out. And also, cri crippling talon as well is kind of a ranged cripple that you can throw at people. Nice utility, but not so great for PvE. Uh, but yeah. Victory is declared. According to the dictates of Crichton law, Minister Zaman is found guilty. Minister Codicus does not look happy. He doesn't like anything to infringe on the rights of ministers. Trial by combat took the judgment out of his hands. Did it? How do you think Zaman knew about the ancient law in the first place? He's no historian. You think Codicus advised Zaman about the clause? If Zaman won the battle, he'd be declared innocent. No more investigation. Now he's guilty, but he's also dead. No loose ends. Never underestimate Minister Codicus. At least we know the identity of Zaman's backer. Go and celebrate a well-earned victory. Anise and I will be in touch with you. I was genuinely hoping for a conviction based on a preponderance of the evidence. Is it just me, or am I a Alright, so as I said before, we get achievements for certain story steps and our choices. We just got crime and punishment. So, uh, that is the st story completion achievement for completing what is essentially referred to as the first chapter of the game. Guild Wars 1, I used to put, like, little black chapter screens, if you're still watching from then. Do you guys remember those? They were really cool. I kind of wanted to do that for Guild Wars 2, but I forgot when I started with this first episode. So, <laughs> we might go to, like, a chapter 2 next episode. Um, but yeah, so we complete that, and at the end of each chapter, you tend to get a bit of a nicer reward as well at the end of your personal story. Um, so here we've got a black lion key um, and this will open chests that drop from enemies and stuff. Also we get a choice of a, of a better weapon. We've seen the longbow, how about we go with a shortbow? What do you say? We also need to see a greatsword too, which we can do eventually. But let's go with a, a longbow. Uh, which we can equip for next episode. That whole fight was just me talking about combat a little bit there, which is kind of lame, but still. Um, he's down, and they've kind of straight away just kind of discarded one character here. Where we've got rid of Zayman, and now we're going to the guy above it. Uh, and Anise, at least, presents a very good argument for thinking that could be Cordicus himself, who's up there, and we, we can't speak to him. We do the best we can. 
Yeah, I know you do. So oh, the yeah, scribe says, on behalf of the court, thank you for your efforts. On a personal note, I'm quite impressed. I've never seen a trial play out quite like this one. Well done. Uh, thank you. I just hope such proceedings remain rare and unusual. Well, hope hopefully they do. Uh, Countess Anise here. Congratulations. This was the most unusual trial. But if you ever tire of adventuring, I'm sure there's a place for you among my queen's barristers. See, I'd love that. Just screw the personal story. Let's just go feed the shining blade. Let's just go do that. That'd be so good. I always thought that would be a great idea as well. A lot of people don't like some of the characters that are in later on in the story in that, and don't like that you kind of leave your personal um, like race in that. I think what would be really cool is if you had like two par parallel personal stories. Eventually, like one of them takes you off to fight the elder dragons and stuff, and the other just keeps you doing random stuff around here that keeps it based around your home instance and continues to update it and stuff like that. That would be so cool if they did that, but. Right. It didn't happen. Uh, we got Thackeray here. He says, This is a great day for Crichton justice. On behalf of the city, you, the Seraph, and myself, allow me to say, Well done. Enjoy your victory. I'll be in touch. All right, sure you will. In fact, he's already been in touch. That's why we got mail up there. What but we'll read that next episode. Uh, another fine day's work on your part, that is. Frankly, I'm exhausted just watching you. I hope you'll know I'll be toasting to your successes later this evening with damsels yet to be determined. Oh, I like how that's plural. I I know, Farron. Just spare me the details and I'll toast you for your discretion. Uh, uh, Marius like Carone says, Eamon's a slippery one, eh? But you caught him anyway, I'm sure. Uh, I'll be sure not to run afoul of you and Captain Thackeray in the future. Sure, no worries, old friend. The just have nothing to fear from the law. Uh, we got an observer. Do you have anything extra to say? You are an interesting character, aren't Strength you? Strength in numbers. No, you don't. Man, I love if that. I, I really want to see if that Ministry Garden ends up in my house now. That would be so cool. If he doesn't, I guess there's a bit of legacy content that never made it in. Nicholas Benjamin says, Appalling! Just appalling! I thought we were to pass such an... How do I say that? Utter displays of savage megalomania. A jewel to the death? How is this justice? The system is the system, my lord. While I don't agree with it either, if you want to see it change, be active in the government. The ministry's purpose is to listen to our voices. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm going to run for election as soon as possible. These archaic laws must be abolished. Thank you for the advice. I like this little bit of dialogue. That's cool. Because it's kind of my opinion too. So um, to Madeline do. says, My brother's dead. My family's reputation ruined. This is my reward for doing the right thing. My poor mother. That is depressing, actually. Jesus. And her mother's, like, bedridden? Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Will be proud, my lady. What do you mean? I say that as if she's dead already. She's not dead yet. But because now you can start restoring your family's reputation. That is quite depressing. You're an interesting character, too. I wonder if we'll see anything about that in an expansion. Hey, Sin. Hello, stranger. I begrudgingly speak to you. Uh, wretched. Beastly. The only bright point in this whole farce is that I retain my dignity. You're free to go, sir. Sure. Just spit that line at him. Right, so there you go, guys. That was uh, the trial. D my uh, my plan of doing... <laughs> wow, hello. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Sot, sit. Wow, you died. Uh, he's get he's definitely got his dignity, doesn't he? Um, Yeah, okay. So, um, my original plan of doing two story steps, uh, a video. I swear, I, I do want to get to it eventually. But, hey, we're already half an hour. So, we'll call it here for today. Um, we killed two people in half an hour. See, not the entire game is about combat. Think about that. I think this is a great example, by the way. Think about that quest if you don't care, like, if you just run in through. You would, you would literally just go, speak to two people, kill two enemies, and be done in a couple of seconds. Oh my god, I thought that inquest person was going to speak to me there. You are so blatantly inquest. Not on Mist Warrior, look at you. Oh my god. If you don't know what the inquest is, we'll get to that eventually. But Jesus Christ, yeah, I mean, you could just finish that so quickly and just all that dialogue, all that stuff you can miss. Any case, in any case, guys, I will see you tomorrow for uh, hopefully more 1080p stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm so annoyed. Like, you buy a graphics card and you're like, yay, things are going to look better. And th Oh, God, it, it just made things worse. Wow, what are you? Akabatakakabadu? Are you someone's pet? I guess you're someone's pet. We need a new pet at some point. In any case, I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful evening and prosperous somethings.